Hello friends, welcome back to Let's Tube. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, then do subscribe. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Also, we have a lot of courses in science in our website www.letstube.com. So, do subscribe. So, let's do a quick recap of what we have learnt in the chapter Work and Energy. So, we know the definition of work. We know the unit of work which is Joule. We also know that work is divided into three types that is positive, negative and zero. Now, today we are going to learn something new. Now, let's understand the new concept with an example. Now, for that example, imagine that there is this very small girl who eats very less and comparatively there is this huge guy who is eating a lot. Now, both of them, if I tell them, listen, this is a block, you have to push it. Tell me which of them will displace the block more. Yes, you are right. The stronger guy or the bigger guy will displace the block more. That is, the work done by this guy will be more. Now, what does that mean? This means that the capacity to do work for this person is more. And the capacity to do work is called as energy. So in a layman's term, I can say that the girl had less energy and the big guy had more energy. So through this example, what we can understand is that energy and work done are related. Let's understand how are work done and energy related. For that, let's take one more example. So there's a baller here and the baller throws a ball. He is applying a lot of energy to throw this ball. So if you notice, the displacement of the ball is very high. Because the displacement is more, the work done by the ball is also high. So as the energy was high, the work done was also high. Now let's take one more example where the baller is actually applying very less energy. Because the energy applied is less, the displacement of the ball is also less and the work done is also less. So this means work and energy are interrelated. If you have less energy, you will do less work. Achha. If you have more work or if you have more energy, then you will do more work. Now let's understand what are the different units of energy. Now friends, you know that work and energy are interrelated. So if they are interrelated, Maybe their units are also same. Yeah, it's right. The unit of energy and work is same. That is, the SI unit is Joule and the CGS unit is Earth. Also, one more important question that the teachers love asking is the relation between kilojoule and joule. It's very simple. One kilojoule is thousand joule. Now, after learning about energy, let's understand what may be the source of energy. Friends, the biggest source of energy for us is sun. But that's not the only source of energy. Energy can also be obtained from atoms. It can also be obtained from tides. In fact, energy is nowadays obtained from the interior of the earth. But the question is, what are the different forms of energy? The different forms of energy are heat energy, then we have tidal energy, we have chemical energy, we have kinetic energy and potential energy. Kinetic energy and potential energy are together called as mechanical energy. We are going to talk about mechanical energy more in our next segments. But for now, that's the end. But before ending, let's have a quick recap of what we did in today's lecture. We know the definition of energy is the capacity to do work. We know the unit of energy is Joule and the CGS unit of energy is Earth. We know the biggest source of energy is Sun. But this does not mean we cannot get energy from something else. We can get energy from the interior of the Earth and the tides. There are different forms of energy like heat energy,
tidal energy, chemical energy, nuclear energy, etc. But the more we are going to talk about in the next segment is mechanical energy. In mechanical energy, the next topic which we are going to cover is kinetic energy. So stay tuned. Also, don't forget to subscribe us and press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Thank you.